Hello again, everybody. It's been a little while since I've put up a video. Um, actually, I've been working on a project, but it is a project that uh, I can't share all the details of the build. Uh, it is a design from somebody else that um, I don't want to like, expose his design because that's the heart of his unit that he makes. Anyway, but I'm going to build something uh, eventually for the Silverado. Now, why am I up here at the old Cava Cruiser? Yeah, it's seen better days. Car is wore out. Uh, but I've got a little experiment I want to do, and if it works out on this, the next candidate is going to be the Silverado. Uh, if y'all remember, a few years ago, uh, I tried running wood gas in that old GMC. Uh, some of y'all that's been with the channel for many years will probably remember that. Uh, it was not a complete success. It did run off of it, but it was not, uh, was not a dependable thing that I could drive every day and all that. It was just more of a toy. Now I want, uh, after stopping by the gas station a few times lately, I've decided I don't want to pay that much for gasoline, and uh, I don't know what the future holds, really. Uh, with gasification, as long as you get rid of the tar, you can run an engine off of it, and it will run. I mean, you're going to lose a little bit of power, but it will run good enough that you can drive down the road for free. And it's kind of fun, too, because you, you know, you're making your own fuel, basically. Um... Uh, the pretty much the master of wood gas is Wayne Keith, and that is whose plans that I have got now. That uh, I purchased his plans, his book, and all that, and joined his website. and It is an excellent website. If y'all are interested in wood gas, I would suggest uh, just get the book and uh, join the website and start talking around the people on there. They are very helpful, great, great bunch of people. For my first reintroduction into wood gas, I don't want to go directly to the Silverado and start trying to make it run and all that. I'm gonna start with this. That car is basically worth scrap price. So even if I completely destroy that engine, I won't get any less from it hauling it off for scrap. So I win either way. I learn about wood gas and I may have a car I can drive on wood gas, or I may just scrap it and get the money for the, you know, scrap price, which is actually up right now. Anyway, let's take a look at what we've got here. This is a 1996 Cavalier, 2.2 liter four cylinder. Uh, unfortunately, it has the automatic transmission. Pretty much everything you get nowadays has automatic in it, but I can deal with automatic. Uh, I don't like them, but I can deal with them. Uh, I drove this car a lot. Actually, I was going to do a res do a restoration on it, and I discovered <clears throat> there's nothing here. See how this is all cracked? When I started stripping it down to do the restoration, um, I figured out this whole section right here is basically gone rusted out busted up you can see the rust right there i'm gonna kick it too many times because this whole panel will fall out but uh there is no uh there's nothing there this car has rusted out all the way up through there um rocker panels were rusted out that's just a piece of pv sack see i stuck underneath there after i figured out how rough a shape the car was in I decided, as you can see, I rattle canned it. Didn't turn out great. <laughs> but I don't really care because I wasn't going to put the money in for a good paint job. You can see that is just barely touch it and it moves. That is paper thin right there. So, yeah, the car is rusty. Um, the engine has, let's just see what we've got on it. 
Uh, where is the, there it is. 200 and what? Uh, 227,000, almost 228,000. And yeah, it's a mess on the inside, mess on the outside. It's been sitting a long time. I haven't even opened the hood yet. I don't know what's under here. So we'll find out together. I don't see, oh, I see a big problem with this car. The problem that I see immediately it's not so much over here, or not really even in this area. It's more like up in this area right here. Uh, that seems like that may be a bit of a problem. Luckily, I uh, have possibly a solution. This will either kill them or make them mad. Um, either way, it's going to be interesting. They get you, dog. I'm sorry. Okay, so here we have, looks like a metal intake, which is good. Yeah, I think we can make this work. Now, what I was thinking is, okay, I was thinking the trunk was a little longer this way, but the trunk is like way too short. As you can see from here to there, it's like a foot, well, well, yeah, we've got about 10 inches to the, uh, from here out to there to fit somehow the gasifier, the main part of the gasifier in here. Now, I was looking at the picture of Joe's Volvo when I was, like, planning all this in my head, and I kind of forgot how small this trunk is. Let me get rid of those. But, you know what? The trunk itself goes way back in there and not only back in there but that seat folds down or comes out whatever you got to do and also I could take the back glass out and I can extend this way back in here so we can fit the gasifier maybe even fit the gasifier and i don't know if i really care about the tail lights but i might be able to keep the tail lights too i don't know this trunk is still actually in good shape i don't want to cut the trunk so i just got a little it's not bad though i hate to cut the trunk if it's still good so we'll probably leave the trunk off and uh we may Take this back window out and may just cut the whole thing out make a little pickup truck basically all the way to here or even here i don't know we'll probably leave this for support because this car needs all the support it can get since uh since it does have a lot of rust uh like i said this is not going to be this is not going to be a beautiful build <laughs> but it's going to be more of a proof of concept for me so that i can see what all i need to do to make the silverado run uh having this vehicle running on wood gas will get me started so let's just shut this back down and we need to throw a battery in it and just See if it comes to life. It hasn't been started in a very long time, so I can't even tell you how long it's been. But we do have a battery. Just so happens. And we have, uh-oh, we have no terminals. We may need terminals. Hmm. No terminals. Okay. Well, you know, that could present a bit of a problem. Let me see what I can find. Okay, so I went ahead, went and uh, I found a couple of uh, 
they're not super clean but they should work um, new terminals and I stuck them on here now we're gonna do a little bit of a fire test this has been sitting for a while probably mice have been in here I don't know don't know what all's been in here but uh, yeah we're gonna do a quick check and we're gonna see if anything catches on fire or smokes actually one thing you can do just be careful but you can see there's one little bitty spark that's not bad that would probably be the computer coming on now I don't smell anything burning I think we're okay I don't see any smoke let's we have some antifreeze in there seems to have oil in it uh, there is no transmission fluid dipstick so we don't really know about that now we'll get in here or we'll reach in here anyway it's got the buzzer going it's always good so what do you think let's turn on a key where is the key right there it is the key is on wow this car is worth more than i thought it's got a full tank of gas in it almost okay let's see oh yeah I'm not hearing the fuel pump. Okay. Don't seem to hear a fuel pump running. All right, so figured out what my problem was, why it wouldn't start a while ago. And uh, until I've been tinkering. All right, first thing I did, I checked spark. I just pulled spark plug wire off. Stuck a screwdriver in there, cranked it, getting good spark. Uh, I took and uh, got a little drizzle of fuel out of the four-wheeler. And I squirted a little bit into the throttle body. I took off uh, took off this tube right here, all the way to the throttle body. Squirted a little bit back in there. Hit the key, it fired right up. So, uh, so that right there told me there was no uh, fuel getting to the... Uh, throttle body or to the fuel injectors so then I took that little relay out that runs the fuel pump and I put a jumper in there I couldn't hear the fuel pump run but I could see the arc so it was making contact power was getting to the fuel pump but it wasn't running so what I did let me flip you around okay so what I did you see the seats laying over there right back there that's the fuel pump connection. Uh, what I did, uh, sometimes this will work. You don't have to take your seat out to do it. Um, if you got a fuel pump that's quitting on you, it's probably going out and eventually it will stop working altogether. But you can get under the car and gently, like, don't just wail on it, gently pick on the fuel tank a few times. I mean, hard enough to jar it pretty good, but not, don't dent your fuel tanks, what I'm saying. Uh, hit it a few times, and then try it again. A lot of times, just those little whaps on the bottom of the fuel tank is enough to get the fuel pump going again. So, what I did, since I couldn't get to the fuel tank, the car's a little low, and didn't feel like crawling around in the weeds. Uh, so what I did is I just took and did that. Okay, fuel tank is right under there. So that put enough of a jar through the system so that get in here, turn on our key. It does 
doesn't. It could probably use a tune up. Actually, it would run a little better a while ago. Give it a little. Not real bad. So, now that we got it started, I got to get it back down to the house. Okay, so now I'm walking back up to get four-wheeler. And see this hill behind me? See there, it looks like something has been sliding down it. Uh, that was me. <laughs> that was a fun time. Uh, I was coming down the hill, and it's pretty steep. It, the camera really doesn't show how steep that is. Um, just to let you know, though, I'm holding the camera pretty much level facing toward me. So you can see the hill goes pretty steep up through there. And down here it comes kind of rounded a little curve, goes through the creek and back up toward the house. Actually up here at the top there, right before that big curve is when the brakes uh, just went to the floor. Uh, that was fun. I hit the brakes, uh, brake pedal. It was, it was working, but it wasn't working well. I didn't have much brakes, but I did have a little bit. Then all of a sudden, the brake pedal went all the way down to the floor and I didn't have any. So uh, I threw it in low range or low gear, just jerked it down into one and pulled the emergency brake up. Emergency brake works, so that's why there's kind of scratch marks going all the way down the hill. The emergency brake will stop it, but it drags that back end. So, hey, that was fun. Anyway, at least it runs. I'm going to go up and get the four-wheeler. Anyway, I guess that's going to be about it for this video. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll see y'all on the next one.